I still have a dream. It is a dream deeply rooted in the American dream. The biggest challenge, at least for this reporter, of filing a story in commemoration of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. is overcoming the journalistic urge to reinvent or freshen up a story that comes around every year. Live out the true meaning of its creed. The substance of Dr. King's 1963 I Have a Dream speech does not require any tweaking and still resonates with teens like Sonia McMillan. The speech means that you can do whatever you put your mind to. The speech's delivery, however, I have a dream. has been retuned. But one day, this nation will rise up for the ears Live out the true meaning of, its of a younger generation. In some circles, there remains no easy way to determine whether we've achieved racial equality in this country. I still think there's more room to grow. I still want more. I still want more change. Sanaya and 120 other children at the Children Aid Society's after-school program are offered a myriad of recreational classes and homework instruction. This is the kind of urban safe haven that allows these children to be witnesses and not participants to the drama of a life lost to the streets. You think we've achieved Dr. King's dream or you think we still have some ways to go? What do you think? Some ways to go. Like, kids out there, like, they'll, the speech that I have a dream, right? So they would, like, they would want to be something when they get older, but then they'll, like, lose off track. You two ready? Go. To be sure, there are obvious signs of how far we've come as a nation. But how easy it is to forget this afternoon scene of little black boys and girls swimming in a public pool was, in our not-too-distant past, forbidden. In 1964, in St. Augustine, Florida, black swimmers in a whites-only pool were met not with smiles, but bottled acid poured by a racist hotel manager. For every dream realized, there are other dreams deferred, especially in our region's tough, socioeconomically challenged black and Latino neighborhoods. And this is where the ever-evolving conversation on racial equality gets tricky. Because the realities of discrimination and isolation are no longer based on just race. Poverty and income inequality casts a much wider net, trapping not just African Americans, but millions of poor people of color. We have to wrestle with some of the same contradictions that Dr. King wrestled with. From black success stories in sports and entertainment to our president in the White House, the media provides a never-ending live stream of hope for teens jamming toward a one-in-a-million superstar career. But Dr. Khalil Gibran Muhammad, director of the Schomburg Center for Research in Black Culture, says parents should be weary of placing too much emphasis on individual success stories while downplaying or flat-out ignoring society's real-life challenges. At the same time, we see on the streets of America, from the rural back countries of the South to our urban communities here in Harlem and elsewhere, tremendous inequality, tremendous poverty, failing schools. But we don't want to confuse symbolism for substance. And we want to make sure that the structures of opportunity in our society are built on solid ground. I don't want to be the kids that I told you about, like people being off job. I don't want to be dropping out of high school, doing things that a 13-year-old, a 15-year-old shouldn't be doing. So if real progress toward Dr. King's dream means keeping an eye on the big picture, then Sonia McMillan's vision for her own path to success is 2020.